Good evening and a very happy new year to you. On this week's programme, Murder and Mayhem at Wild Goose Lodge, the unsung Irish hero who saved 6,500 people during World War II and 300 years of looking for love through the personal ad. Wanted a wife, an American gentleman of Irish parentage, Roman Catholic, wishes to meet a young lady of suitable condition and age with a view to marriage. He is 27 years old, Considered good-looking, in commerce, and has come to Ireland specially to obtain a partner for life from the daughters of the land of his parents. Tempted? Well, I'm afraid you're a little late. That ad actually appeared on the 8th of June in 1878 in the Irish Sportsman and Farmer newspaper. The origin of the personal newspaper ad goes back a lot further than that, though. A few decades after the invention of the modern newspaper in 1690, they were being planted in newspapers, and by the mid-19th century, they were really flowering. Historian and blogger Juliana Edelman has been examining what sort of ads were appearing during this period here in Ireland, and she joins us to share her findings and tell us what they reveal about people's lives and attitudes during Victorian times. Juliana, you're very welcome. Why the growth in personal ads during the second half of the 19th century in particular? There's probably a bunch of reasons. Um, in If we were looking at Britain or England, we would probably say growth of cities and urbanisation and people essentially losing uh, those social networks that they might have had um, in smaller towns. Um, in Ireland, you don't have quite as much urbanisation, but certainly what you have, um, which has been well documented post-famine, is, um, is an incredible drop in the marriage rate. Um, and so people are left um, leaving marriage later, probably con- concerns about their financial future. So you have lonely people going past the age that they would have normally gotten married and then having recourse to sort of not normal networks. What age were people getting married at at this stage, post-famine? Obviously pre-famine, very, very young. Post-famine, were you up into the, the 30s and that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, to, to the, the age definitely shifts. Um, I think there's, a, there's an impression that people are getting married before the famine extremely young, and that actually doesn't, doesn't bear out. But pre-famine, we're looking at women getting married in their early 20s, 22, 23, um, and then in the post-famine period, that jumps up to, to more like 24, 25 and for men, it would have been older, pre-famine period, about 27. And then, yeah, 30s is not mm. uncommon after the famine. OK, let's hear a few more examples of some of these extraordinary ads. A gentleman of ample means, aged 35, once a wife, must be younger, handsome and accomplished. If attached to all kinds of field sports, horses, dogs, etc., the better. This is genuine. State religion. Widows eligible. Now, as you said, the most common form of ad seems to have been looking for a partner in matrimony. Would it not have been more common to meet a a life partner through family connections in those days? Yeah, absolutely. And parents would have been... I mean, I think what you're seeing in the personal ads is the breakdown of those usual ways of getting a partner. So parents would have been instrumental in finding you a partner. Um, and in fact, uh, we know at all levels of society that there is a, um, and particularly there's more written about lower levels of society, that there's a lot of financial negotiation involved. And you want to pick a match that's, um, and you get this coming across in the ads, even in the one you've just read. There's there's an element of trying to find your, your equal in monetary terms as mm. well as um, social standing. All Although, mind you, if you can nab somebody who is your superior in monetary standards, well done. Absolutely. And uh, some of the ads refer to looking for someone, uh, you know, refer to their own uh, poor circumstances and are looking for someone (laughs) who's not similarly handicapped. Now, the ads that we've heard so far appeared in the Irish Sportsman and Farmer. Was it a popular newspaper? Was it used a lot for this kind of thing? Um, This is the first place I came across these ads. I've subsequently found them in other places. Um, And it's quite a popular newspaper. It appears in 1870. Um, It has a circulation of about 2,000 of stamped copies. So more copies would have been bought in newsagents. And that's actually a high circulation for the 19th century. It's a pretty good circulation. It's vaguely middle class paper. And it has a broad circulation across Ireland. So it's got both city people and country folk. And yes, as you can tell from that, uh, ad you just read is very concerned with sport and so the kind of advertisers uh, who are advertising in it are interested in people Now as you say you've also discovered some ads from the same era that appeared for example in, in the Irish Times are they very different in style to the kind of ads you'd be getting in the Irish Sportsman and Farmer a bit more upmarket 
almost all of them state that they're Protestant and looking for Protestants. And of course, at the time, the Irish Times is very much a Protestant paper, so that's not very surprising. They're a bit more mixed, and they're shorter for some reason in the Irish Times. Maybe it was more expensive. Yeah, to advertise. <laughs> probably. Okay, here's, here's one from the, uh, as you say, liberal unionist Protestant newspaper of the, of the 19th century. Spinster, middle age, Protestant, musical, domestic, wishes acquaintance gentleman over 40, Understanding agriculture, with money, good land. Vicinity markets. Only genuine replies answered. Do these ads conform to our Victorian stereotypes that marriage is more about money and property than it is about love? Or do we get, does love come into it? Well, I think the ones that have, that have just uh, been read definitely conform to that. I mean, there are a lot about money um, and ab- about property. The woman's advertising there that she has a bit good piece of land. But you do get other kinds of ads that are much more um, romantic or much more spontaneous. And you get these kind of secret correspondences between people that are not actually personal ads insofar as they're looking for a partner, but they're, um, they're actually sort of leaving secret messages to one another in the newspaper. And how would the personal ad have been regarded by wider society, by Victorian society in particular? Did they did they raise moral moral anxieties? Perhaps not so much moral anxieties as um, although that does happen later in the century, um, as this is seen as, you know, the recourse for the sad, lonely and ugly uh, who've been left behind. And you get these. um, I've come across a couple of stories that were hoaxes. And I I assumed that the ad would have been a hoax. But in fact, it's not the ad that's a hoax. It's that people reply to the ad uh, as a hoax to play a trick on the person placing the ad to have an opportunity to mock them and often throw things at them and humiliate them in public. Okay. And there was also a problem, as we'll hear with this next ad, if you were a widow or a widower. A young lady, thinking there must be something romantic in an unknown correspondence, would like to open such with a gentleman of refinement, intelligence and wealth. She is too modest to say with a view to matrimony, but would have no serious objections if it should lead to that. No widowers with more than three children need apply. So why were widows and widowers generally not a desirable match? Well, you you heard her specify no widowers with more than three children, because obviously if you're a young woman and you would be marrying an older man because you've maybe missed your chance to marry one of your your, um, same age, you don't want to get into a situation where you've suddenly got six of somebody else's children to take care of, especially if you considered having children of your own. So yes, a widow or a widower would have been a severe disadvantage because of having bringing these dependents. And obviously people's life expectancy was much lower in the 19th century, so there would have been more widows and widowers about back then looking for companionship, wouldn't there? Absolutely. So, um, you know, someone in their 60s is very elderly in the, in the 19th century. Let's come back to what you were talking about, the coded messages. As you say, people use the personal columns to send these messages to each other, some in code, others more obviously transparent. What, what sort of messages? How did it all work? Um, Well, it seems that people are conducting uh, relationships that their parents might not have approved of through these advertisements, or else maybe they just get a kick out of sending them to each other. But um, they're clearly, uh, you know, they would have used coded names for each other, um, and then they would have been sort of very nonspecific, or sometimes they would have arranged meeting places through the messages. Um, Obviously, if they're suspecting their parents might intercept their post or something like that. So it's a way of sending messages that you're that you might uh, get around the sort of normal parental restrictions. So these were often to do with elopement, for example, as well, well possibly. They could have been. I mean, the ones I've come across are not not necessarily to do about marriage. They're to do, you know, meeting people at the races or, you know, whether the last letter has managed to get through or not. Mm. So um, they're sort of in addition to other forms of communication. We'll, we'll play one more, yeah. and this is entirely uncoded. There is absolutely no ambiguity whatever about <laughs> what this one is about. This is a plaintive plea for the return of a husband. Harry B is entreated to return to his broken-hearted wife. Home is desolate and life intolerable without him. All is forgiven, for love covers every fault. Return, darling. Return. Return. Clearly somebody in distress in that instance. Now, were we very different from other countries in what we advertised for and how we worded our ads? You would definitely maybe get an impression of which country the advert was from by reading them. Although I haven't, I can't really put my finger on anything in particular. Although the Irish ads are, 
in the Irish Sportsman in particular are very long, which is somewhat unusual. Some of the ad, the other ads you see are quite short, get to the point a lot faster. Any evidence finally in the 19th century of people looking for same-sex partners? I haven't found it so far, but I know in... Um, in England, for example, you do get advertising for same-sex partners at the end of the 19th century. Um, and it's largely, um, you know, in coded terms. So uh, saying you liked Walt Whitman or um, opera might be, uh, as a male, would be an indication that you were looking for another man for something other than friendship. So it's code again. Yeah. Juliana, thank you very much indeed for that. Juliana Edelman there. Juliana is co-editor of one of the best history blogs on the internet. Pews Occurrences. Google it and tell me I'm wrong. We'll take a break.